Thanks a million for taking the time for doing this interview today, Liam. I, I'm a teacher in St. Rock's Primary School in Glasgow, and um, the kids have had a lot of questions they've sent in, and they would like to ask you if that's okay. Yeah, no problem. Fire away. Perfect. Thank you. So the first one comes from Victor, and I'm a posy. So what's about um, the lockdown for you now? How's it going? Are you still training? Yeah, so um, right at the start of the lockdown, which seems um, a long time ago now, we uh, we all got designated a program through our fitness um, uh, member of staff at the club. Um, okay. So all the lads have kind of it's a general program, um, but you can uh, tweak it to your specific needs. So um, you know, if you're a defender, you might work on something different to a striker and so on. Yeah. So. Um, I was quite lucky probably two months before the virus came along. I, I kitted my garage out with some gym equipment. So um, oh, nice. I've been one of the fortunate ones to uh, be able to get hold of some equipment in the beginning. Obviously, I think there was a mad rush on the internet to get, you know, the way. Yeah, the yeah. I was one of those. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think everything's starting to get back to normal now. But um yeah, I was crack on with that and just trying to mix it up really in terms of the things that that I do. So maybe some uh, upper body sessions. Uh, luckily, the weather's been nice for the majority. So, um, yeah. you know, uh, circuits out in the garden, uh, going on a road run, on a bike ride with my son and things. So just trying to mix it up, trying to keep it fresh, something different every day. I've had a dabble into um, like yoga and things. Just Oh, you know, nice, yeah. Just, just things that I don't normally get time to do, and 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 just trying new things out really. So it's been, it's been all right. Nothing obviously compares to the day to day stuff, you know, yeah, being around sure. the lads, the father sides, and getting the balls out. So, um, looking forward to getting back to the to the normality really, like well, everyone is. Hopefully, it'll be soon. Hopefully, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, the next question was quite popular. Um, so this is from Jay, Lena, Sarah, William. Lyle and Leo, and they want to know when you started playing football. Yeah, so my, my earliest memories probably around four and five, just in the garden and things with my dad. Uh, my first real team was uh, Young Owls, so I would have been about seven then. Mm -hmm. um, so I had one season playing kind of with my friends, if you like, and then yeah. um, there was five of us from that team. It's quite unusual now. We all went to the um, academy there so at Sheffield Wednesday, so uh, we all managed to, to sign there. Uh, went right through the age groups together, and uh, that same five got all got professional contracts and things. So that's brilliant. I think we had, yeah we helped each other along really. You know, keeping the nucleus of the squad together was um, quite important for my personal development. Playing with somebody that you know, the weaknesses, you know, the strengths. So mm -hmm. we kind of helped each other along. Um, there's only one or two still playing kind of lower league now, but um, yeah, that really helped my development growing up. Fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, the next question comes from Prashant, Monas, Zooting, Jaden, Christopher and Kean, And they want to know who inspired you to be a footballer when you were younger? Um, I think, well, my dad was a Liverpool fan, so... I used to watch a lot of them growing up. So I think Steven Gerrard's an obvious one um, yeah. from my kind of generation and the position that I played when I was younger was a central midfielder. So, mm -hmm. you know, you'd be out imitating your favourite players on the field, like I'm sure kids do now, do you know what I mean? And yeah. trying to copy the techniques and mannerisms and things. So, uh, yeah, Steven Gerrard was probably up there for me growing up. Perfect, thank you. Um, next question, actually, you've kind of linked in with it there. It comes from David. It's about what position you play in. Yeah, so I've gone right through um, the team, I think, <laughs> since being a professional. So played in every position for Sheffield Wednesday, apart from in goal. So um, <laughs> I'm yet to tick that one off. But no, I started my earliest memories as a striker. Um, right through the age groups and things. It wasn't until I got to around 16, 17, I dropped back into midfield, kind of, you know, box-to-box okay. -box, uh, midfield. I played for the Scotland under-19s and uh, under-21 teams, the centre midfielder. Um, okay. And then I finally got my kind of big break as a, as a right-back to where I'm playing now and, and played ever since. So um, I think 
playing centre midfield, it allows you to, you know, be comfortable on the ball. Um, yeah. And you can kind of play many positions, having played that position for a long time. So, right back, left back, mainly this season, just because we've had a shortage at left back. So, I always say as long as I can help the team, you yeah. know, the best I can, then I'm happy to play wherever the manager, you know, wants me to. So, I don't, I don't mind really. Yeah, I Utility think that's the best man. attitude. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. And the next question comes from Nazareth. So he wants to know about your first professional game. So how did you feel before it? Yeah, I've had this question uh, previous on, on another interview and um, it was a uh, cup game, my first debut, uh, Sheffield Wednesday against Bury in the cup. I think, I say I think because I'll get onto that in a moment, but we won 1-0. Um mm. Nice. I think the, the the overriding emotion of, of the game, kind of, I can't really remember too much of the actual game, what went off. You know, you remember the feeling of walking out of a tunnel, yeah. uh, looking up at your family, and it's kind of almost as if all your life's been geared into this, you know, one moment. moment so it's yeah. overwhelming. And I can't really remember the game, to be honest. <laughs> like, strange, but yeah, we won, uh, Barry in the Cup, so a uh, proud moment. Brilliant. Very nice. Excellent. Um, the next question comes from Emmy, Aidan and Zuzing. And they want to know who your favourite player is. Oh, that's probably... Again, probably go back to like my idol growing up. Um, so, Stephen Gerrard, right. who else was about that time. You know, like Zidane. Uh, I like yeah. watching him. as again a centre midfielder, but one that sticks out for me was Thierry Henry as well. Um, just some of the things he did, uh, the way he played, you know, direct pace, um, some of the finishing that he, that he produced and the skills, you know, that had not been seen up until that point. So he just made it look so easy as well. So Thierry Henry was a fantastic uh, player to watch growing up. Yeah, he was incredible. Um, so next question comes from Jaden, and he wants to know who's the best player you've played with and the best player you've played against? Okay, so oh, the with tough one, question. <laughs> yeah, it is a tough question because you you have you know certain parts of players you've played with that stick in your mind. Yeah, and I always go back to it might be players that have helped you in a certain time, not so mm -hmm. much their ability of obviously play with players that have gone on to play for you know top level. But at the time I played with them, you wouldn't really say that you know. They stuck out as anything special, but they've gone on mm -hmm. to develop. You know, Mikel Antonio, for example, left us, went to West Ham now, and he's, you know, Premier League player doing well. Yeah. Um, recently, obviously, I've been in the Scotland team, so there's a whole host to pick up there, like Scott McTominay, Man News, going to have a bright future. Yeah. Uh, you know, John McGinn's players like that. So I've been lucky, really, to, um, to play with some good players along the way. I think. It's easier to say the one who I've played against. We played um, Man City um, before the lockdown, um, so two, three months ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the cup game and, uh, you know, you're looking at the team sheet and things and, you know, you're hoping they, they put the big guns out and um, and they did. They put a full-strength team. So, yeah, I played centre-back that day. So, first time I played um, as a centre-back and you're up against Aguero and Jesus. So, it's... Uh, <laughs> And David Silva just behind the ball. <laughs> I, you know, can pick from any of them Man City players. They're all world class, you know, internationals and things and, and season pros. But one that really sticks in my mind again, we played Man City going back um, maybe seven, eight years ago now. And it was mm -hmm. a prime Yaya Torre at the time. I was playing centre midfield and he had a crazy season, got some like unbelievable assists and goals that season. Mm -hmm. And I was up against him and Frank Lampard when he was at Man City for a short time. Um, and them too, it was like, I was a lot younger then. Like recently, I, I yeah. was able to compete against Aguero. You know, I'm physically a lot stronger than I was sort of 18, 19. But coming up against Yaya Torre at 19 and he's like a man mountain. And, I know. <laughs> you know, quite a daunting uh, figure to play against. Hard to get the ball off of him. We didn't have much of the ball. So for that reason, I'd say Yaya Torre. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, he had everything, didn't he? He was brilliant. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Um, so the next question comes from Callum, and he wants to know what's the best football ground you've played in? 
Oh, that's, uh, that's a good question as well. Um, again, I've played in lots of nice stadiums. I've been lucky yeah. enough to play all around the world. Um, most recent that comes to mind is the stadium we played in Russia when we played against them. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was an incredible stadium. I've been to Wembley, um, although I didn't play that game, actually. Um, I also like playing at the Newcastle United's ground, St James's Park. Yeah, or yeah. Sport. Now that's um, that's a nice atmosphere, and you know the the away fans are right at the top, and I think that sticks in my mind because um, we've had some good results there recent uh, in the recent past. Um, so mm-hmm. it's always you always remember grounds that you've done well at, as opposed yeah. to um, <laughs> the ones that you know like an Etihad or, or things that are difficult. Um, mm-hmm. Also. A recent one last year, we played Chelsea in the FA Cup, and that was the first time I'd been to um, Stamford Bridge. So that was uh, that was a nice one as well. Next one comes from Dermot. So he wants to know if you could choose any other club to play for, who would it be? Oh, that's uh, that's a good question. Uh, it might get me in trouble for answering that one. <laughs> Obviously, growing up, uh, growing up a Sheffield Wednesday fan, I think you know, kind of. Playing for the first team of things was a dream come true, yeah. and um, I think as you as you get older and as you grow, you kind of your goals and things change, and mm-hmm. you know you set yourself different targets. So to play a certain amount of games, maybe to uh, yeah. you know to captain the team um, and things like that. So I think in terms of club, I'm happy where where I am, where I've been the whole of my career really. But um, it's just hitting them next kind of level. You know, I was lucky enough to captain the team this season. Um, and just progressing to be that kind of, you know, your, your career goes so fast and being that kind of experienced player now and taking on a slightly different role in terms of looking at looking after the young lads that are coming through and um, anyone who's new to training, maybe an under-18 player or, you know, and, and kind of taking on a different uh, role within, within the team, something yeah. that's important to them. So, yeah. Brilliant. Perfect. And um, the next question comes from Holly. So, what's been the best moment in your career so far? Again, these are these are all tough questions because <laughs> for different reasons. That I mean, we've touched on my debut there yeah. uh, earlier on in the interview, so that's something that you know sticks in your, in, in my mind. Uh, I don't get many, but my first goal, my uh, my <laughs> debut goal, um, I used to keep him out the other end. But yeah, that was that was special. Um, we also got promotion um, that season, so I'm lucky enough to have a promotion on my CV. Um, you know, recent times, Scotland debut, obviously, and mm-hmm. representing my heritage. So, a number of things that I can't really, and you know, other things as well that people might not think about, like walking out with my son as a mascot. Yeah, yeah. You know, these are kind of the other side of it that people might not appreciate, but. You know, he's at an age now, luckily he's five, nearly six, where he can, he's starting anyway to understand um, and kind of grasp the magnitude of what, mm-hmm. you know, what his dad's doing, which it makes me proud for him to, to see me. Uh, hopefully I've got a few more years left in the game just yet. So, oh, you definitely do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, it's, it's proud, you know, for my family and especially my son to walk out with me and that's a special moment. Very nice, very good. Excellent. Um, so the next question comes from Aidan, Yaya, uh, Ila and John. So they want to know what's the best part of being a professional footballer? Oh, I think the best part for me is, you know, doing something that you love, yeah. um, you know, day in, day out. And um, just having the opportunity to, to play football for a job, it's the best thing, you know. It's, it's a lot of young girl and boys dream to... Uh, to grow up and do and you know it takes a lot of sacrifice along the way and I think that's what Mm -hmm. makes it uh, that bit sweeter when you can you know finally make it and I think a lot of players these days think they might have made it before you know before they have and a lot of money gets thrown at at younger players at bigger clubs and Mm -hmm. um, for me that's when the hard work kind of starts when you first sign that pro contract that's the time to right knuckle down and and um you know, gain that experience. I had to go out on loan, and other players follow different paths and things. And you just got to do what's right for you. And and um, yeah, I think 
just having the privilege of, of playing football for a job, it's, it's the best thing in the world. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks. The next question is kind of the opposite. It comes from Isla. So what's the hardest part of being a professional footballer? Um, the hardest part for me is, you know, dealing with um, injuries and things. So yeah, I've been quite lucky, really, throughout my career, touch wood. I've not had anything sort of major. Uh, but I've had, you know, setbacks two, three months at a time. And, and you know, it's seeing the, your teammates going out to training um, and you're in the physio room stuck indoors. So it can be frustrating. Uh, so it's more like your mentality and things. And, um, you know, getting in a bit earlier, doing the work, staying a bit later, putting in the extra hours for when you do come back. And um, as much as, you know, you experience lows, the lows, you know, you have to go through them to... Um, to appreciate the high so that's what you've got to try and stick in your mind in in anything in life really so yeah i've been there myself it's not easy but yeah. i've started yoga as well so apparently that helps yeah, to avoid an injury same as you <laughs> yeah. that's it that's the plan anyway so we'll see when i get back <laughs> and the next question comes from anton and julia so they want to yeah. know what it feels like to play for scotland yeah, very proud uh, moment for me and my family. It was uh, my heritage comes from um, my mum's mum. So she was born there. Um, mm -hmm. So my nan, uh, Jean, who sadly passed away, but she never got a chance to really see me play. But um, oh, sorry when, to hear that. Uh, yeah, when I made my debut, it was, it was fantastic. My mum and dad and things and my, and my wife and my kids and was in the stand and she took a little picture of my nan there. So she was in the stadium. Oh, that's there, lovely. So. Yeah, just a nice touch, really. But yeah, I think having played um, younger age groups and things, and then having the long kind of layoff, um, you know, I never really thought my time had come again, really. Uh, so you know, thankful for, uh, to Alec McLeish, really, who, who gave me that chance. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously, Steve Clark's coming now, and got some really talented lads coming coming through, and it's an exciting time. And I think you know, looking forward, we've obviously. I had to postpone the uh, Israel game there for the Nations League, but mm -hmm. you know, I've got a real chance as ever to kind of qualify for a, a major tournament. And I've been only made, you know, five five caps. I want to try and get as many as, as possible um, in the future. So I can't wait to get back. Brilliant. Great. And the next question comes from Melissa. So you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. It's kind of like your future ambitions and your goals in football. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, yeah, so taking on that new role within the team, um, you know, being more of a an aid as well and, and, and mm -hmm. so others can learn from, you know, the way I am around the place and, and, and on the pitch as well, trying to give my experience to, uh, to the lads coming through, but also, yeah. you know, setting up something for when I'm finished. So um, got a little coaching school and things that I'm just working on just now, so um, hopefully, look to take that and um, and take that on to uh, good things. Um, but yeah, in terms of football, again, go as far as we can with the national team, um, and just try and reach the next landmark, the next goal that I set myself. Really. Brilliant, fantastic, thank you. Um, so you did mention there you've set up um, the Palmer School of Excellence. So I've seen some great videos, great challenges on that. Um, so someone, this Harry wants to know about chipping the ball, some of the skills he wants to learn. Have you any tips for yes. him? Yes. Yeah, so in terms of chipping the ball, whenever you want to get any kind of elevation, uh, it's easier to use kind of the top part of your foot, so your laces, and mm -hmm. um, look to really strike through the bottom, the bottom of the ball. Uh, and a trick as well that can help you get height is if you lean back as you're striking it, um, you'll be able to... Uh, generate some more height but um, if you are shooting it might be best to keep your head over the ball so you don't hit it over the crossbar but in terms of chipping yeah um, there's that technique or you can do more of a scoop so just when you're learning and starting out kind of a basic level just to put your foot underneath the ball and just lift your knee upwards so uh, up towards your chest and that'll be the scooping motion so uh, if you can try that and then once you get more confident um, it's just building through different, uh, you know, levels of difficulty and things. Brilliant. Yeah, best of luck with that. The videos look great. All the videos I've seen so far are brilliant. 
yeah, it's just, you know, something really that was born through the lockdown in terms of getting the kids and, and well, I've had some adults, parents as well joining in, so that's yeah. been fun to watch. But just out in the garden, staying active, you know, um, like I say, the drills, some of them are quite simple, some are a bit more complex, so it's uh, mm-hmm. it's nice to give something back, really. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah, well, just on behalf of everyone at St. Rock's Primary and Deaf School in Glasgow, I just want to say thank you so much to you and your family for taking the time out today for doing this interview. I really appreciate it. I know the kids are going to love it too. Yeah, no worries. Some great, some great questions there and um, I hope I manage to answer them as best as, best as I can. And yeah, no, they're brilliant. Thank you so much. Yeah, every, just a little message for everyone to uh, stay safe and uh, stay positive as they can and hopefully normal life will resume uh, shortly. So thank you very much for having me. Hopefully. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you, Liam. Yeah, thank you. Thank Take you. care.